It goes fast. <laughs> Good morning, Becky. How are you today? Good morning, Leah. I'm doing great. How are you? I am really good this morning. Um, hi, everyone. It's Leah again. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. And joining me today is Becky, my boss, because apparently I was inappropriate last week when I started talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but I'm very happy to have Becky here with me. Allison is on vacation today. So she'll be back next week with a guest because I will be on vacation then. But Becky, I'll let you introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Becky Shade and I'm the director of the Fairfield County District Library. Um, and I wore my librarian shirt just for this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. So how was your Thanksgiving? It was good. Very quiet, you know, mm -hmm. like, like a lot of people's this year. Although I have to confess, uh, my Thanksgiving is frequently quiet. Um, it's it's all, oftentimes just myself and my husband and my son. Um, so we're used to kind of the low key Thanksgiving and we enjoy it. You know, we, we ate the traditional dinner and played some board games, watched a movie, very, very chill day. How about you? Oh, good. Um, it was just me and my mother this year, which is different. Usually we get together with my sister and her family and occasion and some years, my um, my other sister and her husband, she's a nurse, so she can't make it every year because um, nurses don't get holidays off. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so this year was just the two of us, which was a little odd, but it was a great day. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here today talking to you and I have a festive mug because it is now, it says gnome for the holidays because <laughs> it's the season. <laughs> And we're all going to be home for the holidays because right. we don't go anywhere. Uh. <laughs> yep. After this, uh, we have plans to put up our outdoor Christmas lights and that kind of thing. Uh, my husband has a very uh, prince. He, he feels very strictly that that Thanksgiving needs to come first before you decorate for Christmas. Um, he knows that he um, is alone in this in the world, um, but <laughs> I, so, I actually put up my Christmas tree uh, Wednesday night. Nice. Um, and a lot of my neighbors, they had their outside decorations up like the day after um, Halloween. I think this year people really want that holiday feeling because, you know, it, it's been a weird year. They want yeah. that that cheer that that Christmas brings. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Whatever gets you through. If it's Christmas lights this year, I say go all out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> So, read anything good lately? I have, so always, right? That's like the question to ask a librarian. Um, not always something good, but always reading something. Right. Uh, when Leah and I were talking about what we were gonna talk about today, we decided to do something completely unrelated to holidays, Thanksgiving, or anything else. Um, sure. But something that she and I both share that I would guess most of our viewers uh, don't know about us. Is that fair? Yeah. I, I, may, I may have confessed this at some point. Okay, okay. Well, we decided we are going to talk about romance novels. Um, I know. Because both of us are um, avid romance novel readers. Um, yes. So, like... Yeah, obviously, librarians are all readers. Like, I don't know that I've ever met a librarian who said they weren't a reader. And if I did, I would not trust them. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. that's just, just strange. And, and I read lots. Really lots only read fiction. Most of fiction, I, I almost never read nonfiction. Um, but I read a lot of contemporary fiction, historical fiction, uh, sci-fi, and apocalyptic fiction, as we've talked about before on here. Um, but probably people don't know that I am a secret romance reader. Like, and I'm not talking about like one novel a year. Like I read a lot of romance novels. <laughs> like one a week sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely one a week. Are you kidding? <laughs> one a week, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes three and four. <laughs> They are a lot like candy um, in my head. Like mm -hmm. they really, generally speaking, no thinking required, um, very structured plots generally. Like you kind of, I mean, I don't have to read the book to know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, I would be a, a happily ever after. <laughs> yes. yes. 
Um, but I really, I enjoy that. I always have. And, mm -hmm. and I think of them a lot like candy too, in that if I eat or read too many of them, I get to like get kind of sick on them and then need to read something that is like intellectual and will feed With my something. brain. <laughs> the broccoli of the literature world. <laughs> but yes. I have been, been reading some good stuff. So it, I just finished Jodi Picot's new book called The Book of Two Ways. And mm -hmm. she is not a romance re writer, generally speaking. Uh, contemporary fiction, women's fiction, maybe. Um, but I think that this particular novel of hers, I read everything that she writes. I'm on hold it for her titles. If you don't know what that is, look it up on the library's website. You can be put on hold for popular authors' new titles. Um, which is awesome if you're not following them super closely because then you get like a present from the library to say that your new her new book is in. I didn't even know she had a new book. Um, <laughs> but I finished that this week and it has kind of a strong romance angle, um, which is unusual in her books. But I would definitely recommend that for yeah. sure, especially if you like her other stuff. I, I won't say that it was my favorite book that Jodi Picot ever wrote, um, but I do I did enjoy it. It was worth reading yeah. for sure. Yeah, I I I went on like a Jodi Picot binge where I like reading book after book of hers, and it got to the point where it was just too heavy. Like it was, this, a lot of her books are very heavy, and it's serious subject matter. And it's like there's that oh, like that moral dilemma. Like what's the right thing here? And like I just got to the point where it's just like I can't do it right now. So I <laughs> I'm taking a Jodi Picot break. I have the last couple. Um, but I need to get back into this because I do enjoy her writing and I enjoy her books. It just there for a while. It was just too much for me. Oh, agree for sure. She is, does traditionally have some pretty heavy topics. And I, I would say that the book of two ways is, is heavy in some aspects as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it isn't your typical, like a uh, fluffy romance, which is usually my preference for romance, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I read a lot of fluff. <laughs> yes. For sure, for sure. Um, I, I don't. So I, I would love to share this. I was thinking about this last yesterday, kind of um, as I was, you know, thinking about how the show would go today. Like, how did I start to be a romance reader? And I absolutely remember how it happened. Uh, my great grandma, when I was a teenager, my great grandma would give me grocery bags, brown paper grocery bags, full of Harlequin novels, <laughs> and. I love them and would consume them like they were candy. Mm -hmm. um, and then she would give me, you know, more and more. And I have to say that this caused some uh, controversy in my family. Um, <laughs> my mom never cared what I read. She was a big yeah. reader herself and really didn't place limits on, on what I could read. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was allowed to read whatever I wanted, basically, um, which worked out fine for me. Uh, but in one of my aunts one time caught me with my sack full of Harlequin novels <laughs> and was like, where did you get those? And I was like, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was real hard, um, to, to argue with that. So yeah, I was, I don't read Harlequins anymore. Um, mm -hmm. but that was definitely my gateway romance novels. <laughs> um, for me, like, you know, I read like um, a lot of like what we now call YA books, like kids mm -hmm. books for those younger crowd that are kind of like geared towards, like they, they've got a romance element to them. But mm -hmm. I think um, my sister gave me a couple books. She's like, oh, these are really good. You should read these. So Lily, Lily, Lily started me on. Um, by the way, hi, Mary, Carol, Tara, and Shannon. Um, uh, let me see. But I think um, A Rose in Winter was probably like the book that was like, oh, this is phenomenal. Like it was just like, that was the book that uh, kind of um, like sealed my love of romance novels. Yeah, A Rose in Winter. Um, Kathleen Woodowith. Oh yeah, it was like yeah. seminal romance writer, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even today, like I read mostly historical romances. Um, like if you were to look on my Libby app right now, um, I believe I have a title called The Rogue Files. And 
uh, how to lose a duke in 10 days. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. I do. I remember the first romance novel that was like that was like that for me. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, Jude Devereaux's Knight in Shining Armor is, is a very old. Yeah. I love that book. And I go back and I read that book every like, I don't know, like every decade, I like, but maybe not every five years, I have to go back and read that book. That one's that one's got um, Douglas, the woman named yes. Douglas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And like a time travel element. Yes. 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 I yes. love that book, and I can never remember the title, so I always have to do like this search. I'm like, what is the name of that book? Um, yes, time travel with the woman with the name Douglas, and mm -hmm. yes, I love that book. And yes. okay, for me to remember a character name, that's a big deal. So that's how that's you know cool. I love that book. <laughs> absolutely absolutely so i read a lot of romance novels a lot of historical romance novels mostly like it, back in the day so like my favorite authors um were you know jude Devereaux, judith mcnaught julie garwood <laughs> dorothy garlock i know like old julie garlock is that, that like, like the scottish highland people like um Ransom is like one of my favorite books and it's that's like in a series with some other um other books but like I think I have Ransom is one that I've probably read like three or four times oh, like yeah. I and I'm it's great for me because I forget just enough that I can go back in a few years and it's like I'm reading the book over again like it's never quite as good as the very first time but yeah I yeah. I forget enough that it after a few years it's it's a it's a good read again. Morning, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, and my favorite current favorite historical romance authors are Eloisa James and Julia Quinn. Like, if you haven't, if if you like historical romance and you have not tried those two, I would for sure recommend them. Um, the Bridgerton series uh, by well, I think it's Julia Quinn. I, I hope is that is that right? I think so. Um, I confused yeah. them a little in my head is actually coming to Netflix soon, oh, which I'm pretty that. excited about. <laughs> um, so yeah, for sure. If you have not checked that out, I would, if you, if you enjoy romance, um, you know, they, they are very predictable, you know, they, they end up together. Spoiler alert, the couple ends up together. Um, but <laughs> I just I love that I love that predictability. It it is very comforting uh, to me. So I read um, even w when there isn't a global pandemic going on. I like that comfort. So <laughs> I read a lot of that. Um, Carol says that Georgette Hayer is her gateway romance. I don't Ooh. know that I know that author. I don't. I don't I've, know I've that heard that name, but I'm not sure that I've read anything. Yeah. Phyllis Whitney, um, Melanie mm -hmm. likes gothic romance by Phyllis Whitney. Um, mm -hmm. Tara devours sports related romance novels, especially hockey ones. I will go on a kick where I will, where I will read like a theme. Um, for a while it was Cowboys, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for a while it was rock stars. Yeah. Um, I, I read, <laughs> for a while it was hockey players, for a while it was the sports team. Um, oh, who's the author who was, who's, who's she's from Ohio? Um, what is her name? Oh, this is my problem. Names, they, they pop out of my head. She's got three names. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I will I will look it up. She's got a, a series, like it's a football team and I just, I love, I love that series. Oh, cool. Um, yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm all about yeah. romance novels. Uh, I think you left off a really, important name in the historical romance novels for like i used to love well i still love um amanda quick oh like, yes yes her books um i just i love them um and especially like like the older ones with like the one word titles like seduction and yes. scandal i i have read yeah. all of yeah. them <laughs> and she would do like three with one letter and then move on to another and do three with that letter <laughs> I think one of my favorite ones was Mistress because I just, I love the way it started out with like the guy being told that his mistress was causing a scandal in London and he's like, okay, I'll deal with that. And then it's like, I don't have a mistress. So who is this woman? <laughs> so, um, oh, Jennifer Cruzy. That's not who I was thinking of. Um, Philip, 
uh, Susan Elizabeth Phillips. That's who I was thinking oh. of. Susan Elizabeth Phillips. She has got um, a series. I forget what the name of the series is, but it's like this football team, and like there's a female coach, and then it's like all these players on the football team. I do love the, that series, and like I listen to it, and um, phenomenal. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I like Jennifer Cruzy too, Ohio author, by the way. Doesn't she doesn't seem to publish very much anymore? Is that no. accurate? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought so. I, don't, I haven't seen um, any. Julie Ann Peters got carried through her teenage years. That's one I I don't know. That's the thing. Um, there are so many romance novels, right? Jenny Hale, she's good. Mm -hmm. um, have you like? Current people writing historical romance novels. Have you read any by Sarah McLean? Yes, I, I have I, read all of them. <laughs> isn't she phenomenal? I love her, yes. her. Her, she's got like strong, quirky female characters who like. I don't care what the fashion is. I'm gonna wear my glasses. I want to be able to see, or you know, just. Like, but her her characters are just like. I'm gonna do what's right. I'm gonna do it. You know, I want, yes. and I I love that about her characters. So. I think, I think there's been like a real change in the, the romance genre, especially historical romance. You know, I, I think, you know, the traditional kind of gender roles and stuff, things, it, it, it there wasn't a lot of like racial diversity. There's not, you know, and, and things are improving. Now, yeah. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say we are where we need to be, um, yeah. but there are, Courtney Milan has been doing a lot of, um, that are more than just like niche. I, I think at one point there may have been, um, you know, romance novels for for races besides Caucasian, but they felt like they were kind of like a niche market that was just intended. And now I, I feel like it's getting better. Yes, um, I feel like the last couple of years have really, the, the publishing world has really been like, we need to broaden our horizons. Yeah. And it's not just race, it's mm -hmm. um, sexuality, it's yeah. um, like, okay, like this book. I'm reading this right now, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. <clears throat> it's one of three books, it's, it's a series about the Brown sisters. Um, and I kind of waited till they were all out because I'm one of those people, if there's a series, I like to read them in a row. Um, yes, Chicago Star, Susan Elizabeth Phyllis, Thank you, Tara. You filled me in. Um, but but this book, it's uh, slightly overweight. But that's that. I like fluffy girls. But slightly overweight, um, chronically ill woman of color. So she not only does she, you know, she fits a couple different categories. She she's got a chronic illness, which makes life more difficult. So like they're exploring those those different um, identities that people have and. Um, I, I think that's really important because I think, you know, the more people see themselves and the more they, they get an understanding of like what other people are going through, I think is, is important. Absolutely. Um, but, I have a, I'm oh, sorry. I oh, have I'm, a, um, the third book in this series just came out. Um, oh, what is it? He's got Actor Aid, Edie Brown, and take a hint, uh, Danny Brown. Yeah, they're sisters. So but the whole series is out now. So nice. I have a, a recommendation from Allison. So even mm -hmm. though she's not here today, she can't stop thinking about lattes with librarians. So when I told her we were going to talk about romance novels, um, she suggested one to talk about. Um, the book is called One to Watch. And yeah, I have it it's on hold. <laughs> Did you read it? No, it's on my reading list. I'm on hold for it. Okay, yeah. same, same. So Allison recommends it, um, but that's really all you need to know about that book. Uh, so. Well, that book, it's um, the character's plus size, which, you know, being a big girl, I love. I love to see a, a plus mm -hmm. size character. Um, and also she said that a lot of that book is also like text and like people's like reviews. And like, there's a lot of the story that you get it's not just, you know, the story being told to you. And I love that in a book. I think one of the books that um, I love, I love books where people fall in love through like letters or email or like exchanges like that. Um, Meg Cabot, um, the boy next, the boy next door, the man next door. It's, they're grown up. So, um, but I think it might've been the boy next door. Um, there's a mistaken identity situation and 
she's emailing with the next door neighbor and like they fall in love over emails, but like they're rivals in, in real life. And it's just, it's, it's, it's really good. But I love books like that where people fall in love that way. Um, Rainbow Rouse, uh, uh. Mints. Like there's, there's a lot of that. I love Rainbow Row. Um, I don't know if I'm saying her last name right. Um, I love this book. And I started telling everyone about this book when I was reading. There was like, oh, what if they don't like, um, so then I went back. I'm like, Shannon, I apologize to Shannon. I'm like, if you don't like that book, I'm so sorry. And she's like, what are you talking about? I really like it. But I got very worried because I was recommending what was in my mind, like a romance novel to someone. So that felt like, can't do that. But with attachments, yeah. Like he's reading these friends' emails to each other and he's falling for this girl and he thinks she likes someone else. And it's just, I love, yes. I love yeah. books like that. Um, there is, yeah, there is kind of, maybe shame is too strong of a word, but maybe embarrassment a little bit yeah. um, over, over the whole romance genre. Um, mm -hmm. I know I saw in the comments, somebody has said, I didn't know that about you. Right? I know because I don't share it. <laughs> I know. When people ask me what I'm reading, they don't want to hear how to lose a marquee in 10 days. They, you know, <laughs> they want to know what intellectually stimulating type, you know, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, it's interesting. Color where, where we were currently devouring. Yeah. That's not what I read most of the time. <laughs> right. Right. I do read that too, mm -hmm. but um also you know all of these others it's interesting to me that ebooks and, and leah probably knows more about this than i do um but the whole like rise of the ebook their romance novels are hugely popular absolutely they're like the number one um genre that that gets borrowed from the library they're the top seller in the ebook market like they they sell more romance novels than like the next two categories combined. Um, I think part of that is romance readers tend to be very voracious readers. Like we don't yeah. read just one, like you said, <laughs> you know, you, you read, and a lot of them are series. So you want to read like every book in the series. You, you, want, you want the whole story. Um, but especially with eBooks, like you can, you know, sit on the bus reading your, your romance novel and no one knows it's a romance novel when you've got your e-reader out. So like, that's phenomenal. And like, for me, I, I often listen to them and um, I, you know, I just, no one knows what I'm listening to. I've got my earbuds in, no one has to know. So yes, there's, there is that, that little bit of shame that goes along with being a reader. I think because most people think of those like corny um, mm -hmm. romance novels, uh, Harlequin romance novels from back in the day, but Mm -hmm. There's so much better than that now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And if Harlequin romance novels are your thing, no, no oh. judgment here. Let me tell you what they've actually gotten better. Like Harlequin has a, a, a like an arm that does like you know they're not just those thin little paperbacks anymore. They 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 do like real good romance novels now too. Yeah, and so for sure. And there's tons, tons of romance readers in the world. Like it's it's just interesting and, and slightly crazy yeah. that like nobody talks about it. I don't know. And Melanie mentioned that they're also starting to have characters fall in love who aren't just, you know, young in their twenties people. That is one thing that I've enjoyed. You know, you've got these romance novels with old characters who are older. It might be like their first marriage has fallen apart and now they're finding their, their, their real true love or, you know, mm -hmm. it's, or, you know, they've, you know, for whatever reason they're, they're older and it's just a more mature story. Like I, I like that about them too. They're yeah. they're all over the place now. Yeah. Got and I think more, you know, the more those sell, I'm sorry, I keep talking over you, Leah. I apologize. Obviously I'm very passionate about this topic. <laughs> I think the more those kind of non-traditional um, stories sell, the more publishers invest in purchasing those and putting those out in the marketplace. So it really is a catch 22 or a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, it used to be, you know, that wouldn't sell enough, you know, it, it fill in the blank, you know, this, this character wouldn't sell enough to be able to justify it. Well, they can't say that anymore. So, right. and like you're saying, um, gay romances are mm -hmm. one of those things that 
ebook wise, there you can find millions of them with character with you know two male characters. That's not something you would see in print though, because publishers they wouldn't print them because they couldn't sell. Um, Annabeth Albert is the author of this book, Conventionally Yours. They're gamers, which you know, tabletop role playing games, which is just fun. Um, but uh, now she's done so well in the ebook market and she's been so very, very popular in the ebook market that they're like, you know what? We'll print this this book because they're they're seeing that people are reading these. So they're yeah. they're they're taking a chance on them now. And I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Like that whole ebook market really it it it's a cheaper way to publish books because you don't have the physical you know, the binding and the paper and all of that. So, you know, you still have the cost for the author, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and some cover art and some, I'm sure some electronic behind the scenes type stuff. Um, yeah. But it, it is a lot less expensive to get those out in the marketplace. And then, you know, that drives demand and, and then it drives what is actually published, which is interesting. And I think um, Fairfield County, it was probably Mary. She just brought up a really important point that you see um, a lot more queer and diverse romances in the teen section. And I think mm -hmm. that, that um, you, you do see a lot of things in the teen section before, before you mm -hmm. see it in the adult section. It's like, it's a, it's, it's an audience who's willing to try something different because I think just a lot of them are, um, <clears throat> you know, they're searching for, for for what they like and they'll try something new or something different. Um, whereas a lot of adults are like, I'm only reading this and they, they don't branch out as much. Whereas I think teens are willing to branch out. And then as they're getting older and they're now reading the adult stuff, they want more, they more variety. So we're seeing it in the adult stuff now too. Whereas for years we've had more diversity, I think in the teen area. I think that's, yeah. you, you, for some reason, you see it in the teen section first. So yeah, I don't think that's us. I think that's the publishing industry. Yeah, honestly. that's what I mean. That's mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah, you yeah. see the publishing industry when there's something new. Like before, there were all these adult post-apocalyptic books. There were teen post-apocalyptic mm -hmm. books. Whatever is the new thing, you see it in the teen books first. Yeah, so. yeah, and then they. And then it kind of bleeds over into adult for sure because I think that's another reason why adults love teen books because yeah. they 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 are on the the edge the cutting edge so yeah absolutely yeah yeah why adults love teen books could be a whole nother show quite frankly <laughs> but, um, there was seemed to be a question there Carol Marks I love humor showing up on the library index. I, I don't know what that referred to, so. Yeah, I think uh, I think Mary's helping her out there. Okay. She, was looking, she was asking her some questions to All right. get those kinds of things. Yeah. But yeah, so, oh, another recommendation. Uh, so for another romance novel, this one is not historical. Um, anyone, anyone read Kiss Quotient? Did you read that, Helen Hope? Yes. I believe it's how you say her last name. Oh, well, there is. <laughs> well, that was unplanned, audience members. I did not know that she had that book. <laughs> I loved that book. And again, the the main character, she's like neurodivergent. So that's mm -hmm. you seeing that in in, in the story. And, and um, the characters are Korean. So you've got um, a different culture. You, I, I, I just, I, I loved it. I did too. I loved it. And she has a new, another one, uh, Bride Test, I believe. Mm -hmm. Bride Test or Bridal Test. Um, very good. Uh, kind of a series. Some of the same characters make an appearance. Um, highly recommend. Like, it, it's smart, smart romance, I would say, for sure. I think I said the characters. I think only he's Korean. I don't remember. But yeah, I think you might be right. I think only he's Korean. But yeah. again, the interracial romance, I think, is great. Um, mm -hmm. This is one that I just, I haven't read yet. It's been recommended to me. I love the idea of it. It's the Bromance Book Club. Um, it's a secret book club. And like they bet, kind of bet these guys before they let them in the book club. Um, and they use <laughs> romance books to kind of uh, save their relationships. 
<laughs> like like the first book, um, I, I started it. I haven't finished it. He's a baseball player. He's like a famous baseball player, and his his marriage is on the rocks, and he doesn't know how to to, to fix it. So um, the guys are like, "We're gonna let you in on a little secret. This is this is." <laughs> This is what we do. They read romances to to figure out women, I guess. But um, <laughs> uh, there's a whole series of them. I think there are three of them out now. But I love the concept of men reading romance novels. Nice. I'm going to have to add that to my list, my, my giant uh, ever-growing to-be-read list. Yeah. I see in the comments, uh, Melanie mentioned Rosie Project. I did. I enjoyed that yeah. book very much. Very much. Yeah, that um, one that was for me. I, I I appreciate, you know, getting a different a character with a different outlook on life, and he just the way he looks at the world is so different that it's 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 great. And again, they're uh, Australian, so it's like you also get a little bit of like, oh, this is great. And when you listen to the book, like I did. You get to listen to that lovely Australian accent. <laughs> yeah, see, and that's probably why you remember. I remembered that it was set in a different country, but I was thinking England in my head. I don't know why. So I believe you for sure that it was Australian. <laughs> that's the other problem I have. So romance novels tend, I swear there's like one part of my brain that that's de uh, dedicated to romance novels. And mm -hmm. as, I re as I read them, it just writes over the last one. So I have a, I have a hard time keeping them straight yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And um, like, I always, I was when in, in um, when I was in high school, I went on a trip, and I got to go to London with a school group, and just for a couple of days. We were there, and I was like, there are horse-drawn carriages. Like <laughs> in my mind, it's like there should be like this dense gray fog, um, and like horses on the road, and. Uh, urchins and that's not what's there now. Someone's tipping their hat to me. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I want. I need to go back in time, but with modern like plumbing and electricity. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Melanie's recommending the cactus. Can I pick that one up? I don't think I picked that one up, but it that one looks really good. Can't remember the author, um, but it looks really good. Um, and if you're into Ren Fairs, Well Met looks mm -hmm. like it is uh, very fun. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, get your Ren Fair fix because I uh, can't like, like many things this year canceled. Right, yeah. Can't be around people, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it looks like we've got a lot of people making um, recommendations in the in the comments over there. So that is great. Awesome. I, I love seeing that we aren't the only romance readers. Like I know we're not because they check right. out really well. Right. Um, but yeah, it's great to see that other people are making recommendations. So like I could go on about romance novels. Mm -hmm. I won't keep everyone here today as I talk about how many I about the ones I love. But you want to make any more quick recommendations before we go? Becky? Oh boy. Um, not traditional uh, romance novel perhaps, but um, Sarah Addison, <gasps> yeah, kind of a mythical reality and, and some romance elements. Um, I do, I enjoy those very much as well. Sarah Addison Allen, that's thank that's you. Great. Yeah, I, I love her books too. So yes, yeah, there's there's always a romance story in there, even mm -hmm. though we're in the fiction section. There's always an element of romance to her stories, which I I love. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What else? You know what? It's getting to be that time of year. Um, we're getting more recommendations that the show now be an hour. We've had that um, recommendation the last couple of weeks, Becky. So I'll just let you know that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's what what you think of that, but uh, <laughs> the Peach Keeper. Oh, Sarah Addison, Alice, yes. Alan. Yes, that that is one of her books. I love, I love that book. Um, yes. But. We are now in the time of year that I love. That I I limit myself. I'm very strict on this. I do not start reading Christmas romances until Thanksgiving. But between Thanksgiving and New Year, I will binge on Christmas romances. I love them. Like 
love them. It is just one of those, and I love the books that are like four short stories of Christmas romances. They're, they're to me kind of like the equivalent of your Hallmark movies, mm -hmm. which I also cannot get enough of. So <laughs> yes, it's a very, very special time of year for me because I get to read my Christmas romances. I love them. Mm -hmm. Nice. I don't really read Christmas romances. I also don't watch Hallmark movies. I know people are always shocked to find this out about me. I, I probably need to start. Oh, there is this one. And I had to, to go back and like research and like find the e I bought a copy of the ebook because years ago I'd read this story that I just, it just kept percolating in my mind. It was, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I think it was Judith McNaught was the author. Um, and, but I cannot think of what the title of the story is. But it's this woman who she goes into her boss's office for some reason, and she sees this picture on the on, the, on his, and she's like, "Oh, who's this with you?" In this picture, and like he's like, "You have to come home for, with Christmas with me." I forget why he has to bring somebody home with Christmas, but he has to bring someone home with Christmas with him for Christmas. But it's the whole. When you can find someone who can tell you and your twin apart, that's the person you're supposed to marry. But she couldn't, she didn't realize that that was his identical twin in the picture with him. So like they fall in love. But um, <laughs> because there's a lot going on in that story. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this whole thing, but it was just like, um, yeah, it was, it was a really cute story. And I, I don't know, it's just, but I was like, I had to go back and find it. And um, yes. Uh, Phaedra Past Patrick writes uh, non-traditional romance. Um, I have heard that name, but I don't know that I know her. Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber. I haven't read that one either. So Ooh, that title is, sounds so familiar to me. I'm not sure if I've read it or not. The title sounds really familiar. I must have seen it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Leah does a great job of keeping track of the books she's read. Um, not as much for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I do. I keep, I keep a very detailed list of the books that I've read. So, but then I, I just read them again until I get halfway through, and I'm like, oh yeah, I think I read this. <laughs> Part of the reason I keep that list is because I, I, I don't want to do that. So, um, who plus? She said, oh. Hoopla's got a good selection of uh, romances and Christmas romance. And you can go on there and type in Christmas romance. Actually, I think they even now, usually they have, a, subject year, for they, it. They, they have a category for it. So you can find them mm -hmm. real quick. So if you're not using Hoopla, give it a try. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's the end of the month, so you get 10 borrows a month on Hoopla, so that if you haven't been using it, the 27th of the month is a great time to start, because you're going to get new borrows in just a few days. And if you go through uh, Christmas romances the way I do, you, you could check out 10, and you'll get them all done before the end of the three weeks when they expire. <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely. All right. So you've inspired me today uh, to read a Christmas romance this uh, this holiday season. I will do that. Um, perhaps I will report back, um, at least to Leah, if not to Lattes. <laughs> and um, so we'll see. I, I usually don't do that. So that'll be a, a fun little Christmas thing. Yeah. I challenge you to do a Christmas romance. I, I can do that. That is that is the kind of reading challenge I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> those, those other ones get too complicated, but we'll see. <laughs> I like yeah. most people, I just, I want to read what I want to read. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if I read a Christmas romance, I can, I can branch out in that very small way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, well, we have gone way over our time. So I guess it's probably, we should probably get going, but it was lovely to talk to you today, Becky. Um, oh, always lovely to chat with you. I love to talk books <laughs> and, and I hope other people enjoy hearing us talk about books because yeah. it is something we enjoy so much. Yeah. So everyone take care and Lattes with Librarians will be back next Friday, 1030. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> I can figure out. There we go. Bye.